Hi. I'm Graham. Uh, who here has been in the first three talks? Oh, super cool. Who was in the first talk, but not after? In the second talk, but not after? Okay. All right. So this is pretty good. Where I think we're, most of us are on pretty equivalent footing. Um, that doesn't mean that this content will make sense, even if you've been to the other ones, but I'm hoping it does. <laughs> uh, in some ways, overrides, and what we'll talk about at the very end, overlays, start to get a bit more advanced, but they're really powerful and important to know. So we're going to try and cover them. Uh, again, this talk is... I, I know everything I'm up here, so if you don't know something, then I, I need you to help me so I can explain it. I really appreciate that. I really want to get those questions. Um, so don't don't be shy. Really want want that feedback. Um, so we are here to talk about overrides and who knows about overrides? Cool. Who's used overrides? Who's used overlays? Ah, cool. Okay, pretty good. I hope there's new content here for you. Um, come on now. Ah, there we go. Well, you didn't make it work. Uh, oh, so it's just like a keyboard. So I was actually um, in a different window, and it's just like page down. So I was just page down in an editor. <laughs> um, okay, so overrides are part of Nix packages. So Nix itself doesn't really know about overrides. Overrides are invention of Nix packages to let you change package definitions without actually editing Nix packages. Uh, this lets you solve most things that, if you don't like how something is packaged, most things can be solved with overrides. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. Um, there are three different varieties. One, which is misspelled, override. Uh, it's not like HTTP here. This is override with two R's. Uh, override adders and override derivation. And I'm going to get into what each of those mean. But this is the, this is the three we'll be covering. Is this misspelled in your slides? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. know. Just uh, uh, exhaustion after making two other talks. <laughs> okay, so this is a package definition. Does this look, who, does, who does not recognize this very well? Who knows what this is doing? All right, who wants to explain what this is doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, please. I can give it a try. So, uh, basically, we're defining a function that takes three parameters, but that takes an attribute set, uh, which where three um, keys are required, mm -hmm. standard down, that's okay. And then uh, this function, when call, we call another function, standard make the uh, make mm -hmm. derivation, yep. which takes an attribute set, a recursive attribute set, yep. uh, which from uh, from here to here. Yes, and that a uh, recursive attribute set is uh, several um, uh, attributes, p name, version. Uh, source, which will fetch uh, uh, some predefined URL for which we provide the the, sha, uh, the hash, and we state that uh, this derivation will need uh, some build input, build the our sync, and uh, we redefine the install phase for that derivation. That's exactly right. Does anybody have questions about that? Okay. Overrides let us change almost everything here. Uh, the first one, override, no, I did spell it properly here. Override is, allows us to change these parameters at the very top of the function. Um, in this example, we are, so we are working with a package called btar, and btar is like a block device for tar archive. So you can like read and write tar is like a block device, it doesn't matter. Um, and in this, in this example override, we are uh, passing a different lib rsync. I don't know what this new one is, it's just different. I patched it or something, maybe you had a bug. So when I, when I use this dot override function, pass in my other lib rsync, when it's called, that lib rsync will be the one I, I specified instead. Does this make sense? Yes. So in blue represents everything that dot override is able to control. Yes. No, okay. it's the, I mean, inside it's not a feature text. Yeah. It doesn't make structure. So okay. what do I have to do to have a function that supports override? Uh, not to be covered in the stock. 
but so internally what it's doing is it's giving you this little circle, it's like a little warp point. So it gives you a point, so it saves everything in here before it's passed in these arguments, and gives you a place where you can tweak those parameters before it passes in the arguments. So it, it's sort of like late binding almost. Does this, does this visualization make sense that this yes. override is changing those parameters and changing this? No, yeah, no. no this override changing the derivation. It does change the derivation. Yeah. It, uh, it, um, it, it creates a different derivation. Yeah. Bef before, so, so all this happens before it gets passed into that derivation primitive. Um, yeah, so this yeah. will create a d different derivation. Yeah. Overrides are very good for when the dependencies of a, of a package are, you want to change them in some way, and not really good for much of anything else. Um, some packages have special flags, like uh, this is a bad example because it's broken, but in the OSSH package, uh, there's, you can override to set uh, high performance networking enabled, and uh, I think that's broken. But you would be able to do like uh, uh, override enable HP equals true, and then you would theoretically get an SSH that had high performance networking. Uh, some packages have tweaks like that. Any further questions about override? Just this over here. So it's like a gen to use flex a bit, or uh, similar to use flex. Th so this would, um, in this this example, it would only be overriding BTAR. It wouldn't be overriding any other package but BTAR. Uh, gen to use flags are more generally global. This is like passing a specific use flag to a very specific package. Right. Yeah. Make sense? You're not. Oh, you're not going to show how it's implemented. Well, no. No. It's it's. Wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll have enough content without getting into okay. wizardry. Did you have a question? Okay. Any other questions? All right. Cool. Uh, that takes us on to override adders or override attributes. Um, so as you, we talked about, this is an attribute set, and the contents of this attribute set can be overridden with override adders. It's like uh, it's it's intercepting this structure before make derivation sees it. Um, and so uh, this is BTAR. BTAR has this install phase with make install. Let's pretend that's what it actually says, and that's wrong because that doesn't compile. If we were to compile this, it would try to write to slash user slash lib. It turned out that we're, we're pretending that it turned out this was packaged incorrectly, and we need to add the prefix to, to prefix equals out during the make install for it to write into the correct location. So when we use override adders, and again, I made a mistake because I'm exhausted, um, but if this, this set override adders, uh, we would receive an attribute set as a parameter, and that parameter is all of the original attributes that were passed into standard end, and then we can manipulate it as we want. So we can take uh, old adders, install phase, so that's taking the make install already up here, injecting it into the string, and adding prefix equals up. And so now when this derivation is, is instantiated and then built, it will have the corrected prefix equals up. Does this make sense? Is that any any questions or how this works? Yeah. Uh, um, Multiline phases mm -hmm. will cover phases, right? Uh, it would be the same. So if, if this was a multi-line string, uh, then then you could do the exact same thing here. Do a, a multi-line string here and and copy the use a variable to refer to the original one and then add whatever you want at the end. How do you change the second line? For oh sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's just do it. Right. Um, cool. Um, let's see. Is that font OK? Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. Oh, I fixed my cursor. Uh, yeah. uh, on the terminal, not in Emacs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so we had uh, packages that entire override adders. Um, cool. Move that down a little bit. Um, and so we have this install phase equals, we'll do a multi-line string here, um, and uh, make install, well, let's pretend we did something else, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? No. So if we were to make an override for this, we would do packages up, btar, uh, dot override, oh, oops, I'm sorry, I'm confusing two things. Um,
So pretend I copied over the entire rest of the definition. <coughs> so in our override, we can we can do the exact same thing we did before, where we do old adders um, that install phase, just like that. Does that make sense? Okay, but uh, how do you change the second line? If you oh. want to add the, the uh, argument to the second line, mm -hmm. uh, second command, for example. In sure. So, in, so you're suggesting, uh, let me clean this up a little bit for, so it's clear. So like the original one's multi-line of make install, maybe we'll do like uh, something else, uh, right. make foo or like mm -hmm. yeah. uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you want to make a change to the second line, or even like a middle line, if there was a middle line. Yep. Yeah, so you really, you can't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you would just redo the whole, the whole install phase. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if you wanted to do something before, like um, like make frost, like you wanted to do that before make install, you can do that fine. If you want to do it after, you can do that fine. But if you want to change something in the middle, really the thing to do is just copy it. Or, um, yeah. Another question, the, uh, the file with override, you have to put it in a special place or you can uh, have it whatever you want. And sure. Yeah, so uh, I'll get to that closer to the end. Okay. So the idea is you would use this one when you can't, if it's found phase will pass as an attribute, we will use override. Mm -hmm. And since it's not available from the top of all, then we use override att uh, uh, attributes. Yeah, so let me go back to the other slide. Uh, oops. Uh, how do computers work? <laughs> ah, there we go. Cool. Um, right, so, so in this, exactly, so if, if what you want to change is part of this function definition, mm -hmm. at the very top, then you would use override. And if what you want to change is inside the derivation, inside this attribute set here, then you'll use your override headers. Yeah. And inside this old address parameter, you have access to the original parameters that were provided. And and you can you can uh, do whatever you want with them. If you so when you do install phase, it's replacing install phase. That one's no longer there. So if you want to keep that, you have to copy it manually. Suppose I want to do both. Uh, because some attributes are uh, called uh, at the top level and some others are within. Yeah. I should do it. I should do it in a certain order, I suppose. We'll we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, yes. Um, but if in the original derivation there are some uh, dollar curly substitution, and then I do this override headers. Mm. Will this substitution already have happened, or will the placeholders be there, and does it even matter? Great question. Let's go back to uh, uh, this example. So we have this recursive attribute set. We have this P name, and we have this version. And we have this P name and version in that URL. For example. So you do dot override adders version, right? And you change version from 1.1.1 to 1.2. Yeah? Yeah. And this is still 1.1.1. Okay. The reason is, is that this, this is not, again, this is not support built into Nix. This is a, a feature added on Nix packages. And so this, this resolution of these variables and the substitution happens immediately before the attribute set is returned. So by the time we get to override adders, it's already substituted. Uh, so if you do want to change the version, then you would have to override the source. And it's, it's courtesy to up, update the version so that the name of the package is correct. Yeah. Does that make sense? Cool. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Um, after you've done an override, is there a way to just print out the uh, representation of the new version? Uh, no. You can say next show derivation on the new package that you get back from the override. So you can show the derivation, but you can't show what the expression would have been. Um, one interesting, or one important thing is, I mean, so. You could, you, with old adders, you get a complete representation of the expression, but it's after fetch URL has happened. So you, you still don't have the full like syntax tree of what, what your expression would have been. The full context being that, I mean, usually it's like old packages and the next argument is new packages. 
Mm, well, we're gonna, gonna get these mixed up. Yeah. Uh, for a dump. Yeah, we're gonna cover overlays in a bit. Yeah. Uh, the, so the typical, uh, what would be the typical usage for making a package that overrides another package? Uh, I'll get to that. But typically, it's like uh, maybe you want to try a different version, like a various, like maybe one that one that one has a bug that like only you've ever seen. Well, the, isn't it easier to change the original package in my own copy of mixed packages and build it? Sure, but maybe you don't actually want to do that. So uh, typically on my system, like I don't actually want a fork of mixed packages. I just want mixed packages plus a few tweaks, right? And if I'm if I'm forking and patching mixed package directly, I have to like rebase or merge and, and deal with all that stuff. When when an overhead, ah, so you can keep them separate mm -hmm. from mixed packages repository. Yeah. Okay. In the example, it should. I'm oh, sorry. No, go ahead. In the example, it should be override attributes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's okay. my mistake. I'll fix that after. Uh, go ahead. Um, it, is this implemented somehow with the, like uh, merge, whatever, like double slash? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Uh, that's a that's a very good point. So uh, maybe in uh, B type is a list of patches. Uh, if you were to say patches equals in a list, it would replace that list of patches. So it would you delete them by default, and so if you want to keep them, you have to explicitly say the old patches plus my new patches. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does um, yeah. this work? Because if I'm the patches like put in to be a string in the formation, so would it still use the old one for the same reason would use the old version? Uh, no. So uh, let me go back to the other, yeah, here we are. So um, typically patches look like this. Right? And so those aren't, those aren't interpolated anywhere. At, at the end, that attribute set has a list of files in it. Right? And so what we could do down here is uh, patches equals um, my cool patch, right? Uh, but maybe we really wanted foo and bar patch. So if we want to keep both of those, then uh, uh, so we, we take the original list of patches, we take our new list of patches, and we add them together. Um, sound good? Yeah. Any questions? All right, cool. Oh, let's try the other screen. Perfect. Um, cool. So to uh, imagine that we have that little work point there, um, that is the entire scope of which uh, override adders has, has access to. Um, and I tried to actually tried to find a way to represent that like you can't really munch like my dash package, like you can't manipulate inside of it very easily. Um, but I'm not a designer, so um, <laughs> this isn't my forte for sure. Uh, <laughs> Um, all right, any questions about override headers? Okay, uh, it's very good for changing sources, very good for changing, adding or removing patches, and uh, it's good for manipulating build flags or, or environment variables for the build. But it can be like override, the function override that you showed before can also be used to override the attributes inside of the derivation. No. Oh, it cannot. No. Uh, override, so override can only touch these parameters. And so it, do, it will change this, right? And it will change this. And if you had like, uh, like, uh, let me go to the editor view, because that turns out to be pretty good. Um, if you have like, who equals, if you have that, if foo equals uh, OpenSSL slash something, it would update up OpenSSL, but would not change slash something. It's, that, that, it's out of its scope. I, yeah, go ahead. When you say that those are the things which you have access to, but not presumably the entire scope, what, what are the things? So when you can go back to this, yep. the burn. Yep. So it's for them, but it's, like, is it anything in those, any, anything in that address that which you're passing in that has access to change? It can override these parameters at the top. That's it. Okay, but if I was passing in nothing, then I could override right out. Yeah. If you pass in, if uh, so this example, if you're passing in OpenSSL, you can change which OpenSSL is being passed in. Yeah. So anything in Yeah. 
Um, but in terms of what's inside the attribute set passed to make derivation, you don't have any control over that with override. Any further questions? All right. Uh, and, uh, oh, cool. That's just example. One, one common thing to do is actually combine use cases, use override and use override address so you can get both behaviors. Uh, okay, this one doesn't show up properly, but this is an example of override derivation. And uh, raise your hands if anybody's used der override derivation. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> Only one hand raised, and it wasn't you. Mm. <laughs> All right, <laughs> don't use it. <laughs> so this this is a very old technique from Nix packages. Very old. People, it's not recommended any further. Uh, if you were at my earlier talk, we talked about this uh, primitive function derivation. This is the most low-level point you get in Nix packages and in Nix. And this is literally uh, all of the abstractions that we have created in Nix packages evaporate at this layer, and you just get this gnarly, uh, huge attribute set of of all the tooling Nix packages uses. Um, and it gives you a way to tweak it. Uh, but the problem is it's way past all the abstractions, and so you, you really, it's sledgehammer, uh, and it's not very good. Not even a good sledgehammer. Uh, <laughs> uh, however, just for completeness, uh, so if we go back here, we have this, this is very internal structure of how Nix works. We have this source parameter in the environment. And uh, here we're overriding source to be a different source. And in the derivation, the source itself is pointing at my different derivation. But again, don't do it. This is really bad. Um, because you don't know how many times that source file is referred to in the derivation. So um, you're overriding here, but maybe another, another point in this derivation refers to the old one elsewhere. Um, and I literally could not find a, a reasonable use case for this. So I only covered it for completeness, and just in case you had used it, to tell you to stop. <laughs> All right, overlays. Um, how are we doing? In seven minutes. Seven minutes? Okay, I have seven minutes. We'll see how far we get, and uh, we'll see. Uh, okay, so overlays. Overlays are wonderful. Go, go back a second so you're not distracted. Overlays are a nice way to create overrides and use them in Nix packages without editing Nix packages. Um, and uh, you can use them for NixOS system. You can use them on Nix on any other system. They're, they're not tied to NixOS at all and they give you a lot of power. Um, so in this example up here, I'm building this hello-example attribute on my default, on my overlay, and hello-example doesn't exist. Uh, in my overlay, which is here, I'm able to say hello-example equals self.hello. There's a lot of ceremony here, a lot of code that is a bit uh, obtuse, but um, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. And then when you build the overlay with hello-example, uh, you get you get hello. It's the exact same thing as hello, it's just under new name, new attribute. Does this make sense so far? Cool. Um, one, <laughs> so this is uh, a bit of a trouble with, uh, with overlays, but the first two parameters are named self and super. And the times you use self and the times you use super, uh, it took me a long time to figure it out. It's, there's been many blog posts written about it, and it's half, about a quarter of them are not correct. Um, but in general, you always want to use self. If you get an error, you should switch to super. <laughs> 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 what if my error is infinite recursion? Then you should go to super. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so essentially, I'm going to try and explain this, and we'll see if we can get to an understanding. Uh, self returns the last version of the package that will exist. So. Uh, hello.example inside the overlay would be known as self.hello-example. Uh, super refers to the version of Nix, of Nix packages before your current overlay. And so this involves some time travel. It's a bit obtuse. But anyway, typically use self unless you're in error and try super. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, here is an example from my own system config. Uh, I have this printer. It's very annoying to print to requires a CNIJ filter too, which I don't actually even understand what that is. Uh, but I knew I needed a different version. So, <laughs> so uh, I use override adders to change the name to a different version and the source to a specific version off the internet. So I can include, uh, if I do Nix build on this file with CNIJ filter too, 
uh, it will give me this overridden version of that package. Does this make sense? Yeah. I feel like I've glossed over a million things, so there must be questions. Go ahead. Yeah, you use the super, but before you were using self to the point. Great question. Right. Yeah, so I got an error. So, <laughs> and and here's, here's what happened. I'm defining CNIJ filter 2, right? I'm overriding CNIJ filter 2. If I over, was trying to override self CNIJ filter 2, it would be trying to override the same one I was defining here. Because remember, self is the last version that will ever exist. And super is the one from before. So if I want to override and, and set some custom parameters, I have to use super. Make sense? Yeah. Go ahead. When you say self is the last version that will ever exist, if you had multiple nested overlays, yeah. would self say in the middle of three refer to the version in the middle of three or no. the future one after? It will refer to the future one. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the time traveling bit. Uh -huh. and, and that's that's honestly honestly in my head it's it's I use self unless there's room to lose an error. That's not that's not a joke. Um, it's just the way that I think about it. Yeah. With overlays, um, if you're using them with just next not next up, uh, they come from well, they can come from config mix packages overlays and then anything in there which is a mix package. Yeah. Like. So if I wanted to distribute something which had some overlays, but I didn't want to have to have people setting stuff into their home directories. Yep. What's the like, uh, the advised way of doing that? Sure. Uh, exactly here. So wherever you import mix packages, you typically you see an empty attribute set as a parameter. So in that attribute set, you can set some configuration stuff. You all want to come in? You don't have to. OK. <laughs> so you can set some configuration stuff, like allow line free, allow broken, stuff like that. You can also pass a list of overlays. <laughs> and inside that list is, is, is how you do it. So I can pass, pass that into my release.nix, um, as release.nix pass these overlays, and then pass the next packages at that point. So wherever you import Nix packages, you would pass in your overlays. And, and then, yeah, it would use your overlay. Um, and I think it will stop using the ones from the user's home directory as well, but I, I'm not sure. I don't like to do that because yes, it's well. impure. OK, cool. I don't know who's, who said that. Oh, thank you. OK. Um, um, yeah. yeah. Well, we're writing the name. Yeah. Is it just to be nice? Or what? Yeah. what? yeah. So Nix, Nix doesn't really care about the name. It doesn't really mean much. Um, it's just quite rude to have like CIJ filter 2-4 and then in the name but actually have 5 dots to go. So I think Elko mentioned today that some tooling uses the name, mm -hmm. I don't remember which, and some others use the attributes. So in... Some oh, yeah. Um, so there's uh, some newer packages, uh, new packaging standards typically use a P name instead of name. Mm -hmm. And so if that was the case for this, then I could do just version equals 5.60. And then uh, in the normal definition, it would use CNIJ filter 2. And then, and then in standard, I would connect them. OK, you lost me there. Uh, OK, so uh, sometimes. The yeah, I know about PNAME, but yeah. I so, so I would use like PNAME equals my package. And version equals one, mm -hmm. right? And so then, in standard end would take that into my package dash one point zero. That would be mm -hmm. the And using override adders, I can intercept a version and put in two. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm trying to because what what you said before is that like when you override, like when when there's interpolation happening, mm -hmm. and override adders that uh, the interpolation happens before override headers actually sure. happens. But this isn't interpolation. So if, if this was, uh, if this was this, which is used to be what, how, it used to be that uh, packages were defined just like this. It was name equals package dash interpolated version. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you need to override version and name. OK, but what happens with pname is not Behind the scenes, is, it's probably this, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly this. But because you're intercepting both of those those uh, attributes before a standard end sees it, okay. it's not interpolated. Yeah. Um, all right. Go ahead. I have a question about the overlay function. 
which is uh, using two arguments, mm -hmm. uh, self and super. Yep, so why is it written this way and not with an uh, attribute set? Uh, uh, Nicola uh, Pierron um, did it this way, okay. and uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, I think there was certain elegant. It was like some elegance about implementation, but I, I think it's a mistake. <laughs> well, what's a, what is a mistake? Uh, that these are uh, like anonymous parameters. Like it's itself. Mm -hmm. That's a function. Super. That's a function. Instead of being like an attribute set of self and super. We have learned that this is, this is mostly the same, right? It is mostly the same. But in this case, you could swap those. You could get those confused. And and this won't won't be won't care. It'll so if like you were to swap those, then super would be self and self would oh, be super. Okay. Um, and if there was an attribute set, you couldn't make that mistake. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So overlay is also uh, a feature of Nix package. Yes. So I can't use it if I want to overlay something that's not Nix package. For example, something I downloaded for from the internet that you find some uh, uh, packaging, but that's not Nix packages. As, as long as it's building on top of Nix packages, okay. it, it can be used. Okay. Yeah. How long? You have one but, minute. Okay, so I'm out of time. I'm happy to continue, but it's really okay to leave. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, right now... Uh, Florian Klink is talking about using post build hooks to get automatic trusting, automatic caching of untrusted builds, which sounds really cool. So if you want to go see that, I, I should. That was a good deal. <laughs> okay. I have one more. Is yeah. this also like a way to distribute new packages? Sure. Yeah. So I use this uh, for my my own systems. I'll define an overlay, put all my packages in there, uh, and and you could also distribute an overlay to people. To yeah. Distribute. Okay. Yeah. You don't have an example. Uh, uh, so, okay, so there's this project called the Nix User Repository. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think it's a little weird because uh, it's not Nix packages, and um, I think there's some security questions there. But uh, you can get in your as overlay, and then you can access like random people's packages. Um, but, but I'm not saying it's bad or insecure, I just I don't. Uh, Everything's in school. I feel I feel uncomfortable using somebody else's package like that. All right, uh, I'll continue. Come on now. Oh, maybe this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no, I'm typing in the wrong door. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, okay, so override using override to replace a dependency. Uh, again, BTAR using librsync, we're passing in librsync2. There's a cool new version and it works better. Uh, and in Nix packages it hasn't been updated yet. So you can do some, some little experiments like this and see if it works. Um, any questions about that? Okay. Uh, cool. Combining override with override adders, adders in an overlay. So, here we go. We get some real self and super in, up in here. Um, so up in here we have librsync2 that uses super librsync2 because we're overriding it. We can't otherwise it'd be a loop. We change the source from probably a fetch URL to a local directory. You can check that out. And then in btar, I am overriding and using self librsync2. Now self librsync2 is the final version of librsync2 that will exist. So it's going to use this version instead of the one that comes with Nix packages. Um, again, I am overriding btar, and so I can't use self.btar, I have to use super.btar. Um, make sense? Go ahead. If I would override libparsel with libparsel2, would packages from these packages use um, libparsel? Yes. But they would, in fact, use libparsel2? Yes, so if, uh, pretend this wasn't librsync2, and you re did uh, librsync equals something, anything in Nix packages that depends on librsync will use your overridden version. This can get you in some kind of sticky situations. Uh, if you override curl, you will have to rebuild everything in Nix packages pretty much because everything depends on curl. Um, and it will have you do that. Uh, go ahead. 
uh, in the last talk, I asked pretty much about this because I, I assume you, you say this because curl is used to download pretty much everything. Mm. But those are fixed output derivations. Yeah. So the exact version doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's a tricky, tricky nuance. That's a good question. So the question is, uh, if all the fixed output derivations are hash-based and don't care about their inputs, why would changing curl cause everything else to recompile? And the answer is, so much software depends on curl as a library. Uh, so probably, I think, Bash does, and like uh, Git does, and... Yeah, probably Python, and we draw GLibc, yep. and some Python these days. So it's everything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so typically, uh, this is just a little background. If you make a change to a certain subset of Nix packages, and it rebuilds a certain number of things, it's called a mass rebuild. Um, and it's we try to coordinate those because they take so much computing resources to do that rebuild. Uh, and curl is definitely one of them, like in the 5,000 plus region, um, maybe in the tens of thousands. All right. Cool. Does that, does that answer explain it? Okay. Cool. And this might actually be the end. Um, cool. So, uh, any questions? Did this help? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, where, where do you keep those files? Or how do you tell Nix to use them mm -hmm. when you build? When you build? Sure. Um, like, uh, you want a real life example. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, all right. So I have uh, in this directory, I have this uh, overlaid up this. And so here's a, a real example. So if this is my package, this is my project. I can just do that, and that's fine, mm -hmm. right? Um, if I go to my uh, my laptop's configuration, so I have uh, uh, this packages directory, and uh, so this is this is my own my own overlay. That's the CMIJ2 right there. Uh, um, and so this is where do I import that? Uh, cool. So here uh, I have in this is for NixOS. It's slightly different, but I do that overlay list, and then I refer to my overlay here. Um, this is a little bit tricky because I have this secrets attribute, and um, most overlays don't do that. Um, what what is going on here is actually, can you guess what's going on here? I can guess. So you um, you include uh, secrets in the scope of overlay, so they can use your secrets for configuring. Yeah, yeah. So that that. Usually it's just self and super, but I've added secrets at the end. That's all it is. Um, and that's that's for stuff like uh, where I fetch my Helvetica font from, or uh, yeah. Can I go back to the previous file? This one? Yes. And you importing your secret to the next door. Uh, so you're right. That's a great quote, great point. So I no, these are not that type of secret. Okay. These are things that I'm not committing into the repository, but like they're not really secret. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like the license for um, Comsans and Helvetica, those are things I can commit to my repository. So it's that sort of stuff. Um, that's a good point, and I should probably rename that so I can teach people bad habits. So what will it be the root uh, So the problem the problem he's bringing up is if uh, you put a secret, like a password or something, into a Nix build, it will be in the Nix store. And a Nix store is readable by everyone. Uh, so secrets should not be in built. Like, secret secrets should not be in built. URLs for where I get Helvetica? Mm. If you're on my system, you've got Helvetica. <laughs> yeah. I think there is also like a directory inside your home. Like, yeah, yeah. Where you can, like, yeah, totally. Place. And, and they will be automatically basically detected and that kind of bit me several times because I forgot mm -hmm. and then builds would like to behave differently on my machine than on other machines because there's this piece of magic that's happening that I forgot about. Yeah, that's terrible. I hate yeah. that. Yeah, um, I, I, don't, uh, I don't use <laughs> that home directory feature. Um, I don't even remember where it is. Like, 
dot config slash next maybe something like that. Uh, oh, interesting. I do. Okay. Yeah. So okay, if you put a config here, you could specify overlays here. Or I think you can even make a directory called overlays. Exactly, and symlink or and put just a bunch of files in there, and yeah. then it will just import them. Um, I, uh, <laughs> so this is good for like nixenv, I guess. I don't know. I don't really use nixenv, so I don't do that. It's for the current user. Sorry. It's for the current uh, user. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, my next talk's not for 20 minutes, so if you have any, any questions, like, I, you can ask them. And also, people can leave, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the end of my talk.